Once again, welcome to this amazing, you know, fantastic, you know, I don't even know how to describe the service. You know, we're once again here on this amazing, powerful, beautiful, you know, you name it, service here at ECD. You know, it's been two weeks now that we've started like, you know, our weekly service. And here we're discussing on an amazing topic called dreams. You know, I believe that you all, like, you know, we all dream somewhere or another, like, you know, at night or we have dreams of, you know, what we tend to become at this one. This dream that we're talking about here is more like, you know, what actually happens when we're sleeping. It is, it, it is powerful because it's actually something spiritual that we tend to overlook. So guess what, guys? We're here at this city. And please, you know, as we're about to dive into this topic, get into the moment of praise and worship, prayer, and the sermon. Guess what? We don't want you to be the only one, you know, enjoying this moment. But please, share this video. Invite a friend, you know. Share the link on your WhatsApp, on your IG, on your Facebook, you know, whichever platform that you use. And you believe you'll have people get connected to this sermon. So please do so. You know, last week we, we were extremely blessed to have an amazing, like, you know, an amazing, you know, moment here where God spoke to us. But God above all actually, you know, spoke through us as well and through the, through the preacher. So as we're about to get into the service, please enjoy and get ready. And may God bless you. See you right after the service. Please don't forget to share the link.
Cause you're the reason Praise the Lord, everybody. I was saying, praise the Lord, everybody. Are you good? Are you good? Can we get on our feet and you clap your hands for Jesus right now? As we're starting this worship time. I would like to make some noise for him and for him alone. Can you make some noise for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. For Jesus, 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 Jesus. You shouting in the house for him. Oh. As we start in this worship time, I would like you to open up your mouth and to thank God for your presence right here. You found a reason to do it right now. Father, we here for you. Father, we here for you. We're nothing but you. Our everything for us. We give you all the glory, all the praise is yours, Lord. All the praise is yours, Lord. Would you fill this house with praise? Would you fill this house with your praise, Lord? We need you, we need you. That's why we're here for you. That's why we're here for you. That's why we're here for you. We bring it all to worship with us, love for you. We're here for you, Lord. We got the reason to do it right now, right here, Lord. You're the reason why we came to worship you, Lord. You're the reason why we came to praise you, Lord. You deserve our praise, Lord. You deserve our praise, Lord. You deserve our worship. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. And I will not be I will always worship you as long as I
Worship to Jesus right now. Can you open up your mouth and say it to Jesus? Find your word and say it to Jesus right now. Can I hear somebody praise Him right now? Can I hear somebody worship Jesus? Oh no. Spirit, move right here, Jesus. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come raise tongues. Come raise tongues. Fire, fire the wind. Come do it.
together. Say it one more time. Lord, I live, Lord, I live to your name. Lord, I live to name on Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad you hid my life. I'm so glad that you came to save the song. From heaven to earth, from heaven to earth, to earth. away, to show. from the earth to the cross, to the my cross. debt was paid.
give a big shout to Jesus right now? Can you shout to the Lord? Can you shout to the Lord? Reason King, we thank you. Thank you for being here with us tonight. We acknowledge your presence. And we say it from the bottom of our heart, thank you. We want to share this moment with you, God, and believing your presence will be. Um, we bring such difference and everything that will be done this evening before your glory. Teach us, Spirit of God. Speak to our heart. Help us understand exactly what you want us to do, God, as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shall we clap our hands? We may be seated, please. Uh, I want my mic to be tuned right now before I just start thinking it is my spirit or something. Would you tune my mic right now? Just do the whole balance because say they didn't yeah we we're good we're good hello 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 yeah it's coming hello 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 it's coming it's good thank you thank you so much well how are you tonight would you just greet your neighbor and just say hi? Um, welcome to the presence of God. What did he say? It's okay. Um, okay, praise God. I'm so happy to be here as I said it. Uh, Okay. As I said it last time, what I want to do is, uh, before we even move forward, I wanted to, I wanted us to have a habit of having, a, I would say, common songs of the church. Um, this is so new to almost all of us. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to play. The guys are just going to play. <laughs> Uh, and it's, as I said, it's all new to all of us here, having a English church coming from a French church. One more years of seeing, like, French ministry coming out of English church. Sounds uh, a bit uh, familiar, but uh, an English church coming from a, a French church, which it's kind of different. And then, you know, the song lists in the English-speaking world, the song list is just big. They have a lot of songs, lots of songs. So we sometimes wonder which song are we going to be singing at church. And uh, as an artist, it's since the beginning of this church, we do have some uh, uh, challenges when, when it comes to the song list. The choir, we're bringing wonderful songs and then, we might not necessarily, all of us, 
be familiar to those songs because we listen to different artists. So I thought of trying to teach you guys some songs so you get used to them. And then we start uh, just using those songs, 10, 11, I don't know how many of them. Uh, I might probably teach you some of my own songs, who knows. Um, but just for us to, to have set a sense of expectation as we're going to the church. Uh, can I have more mic? Uh, maybe one, something must be wrong on the speakers or something. Uh, okay. And then uh, the more we start learning these songs, the more we start all of us having like songs we know as a family, that those songs are really part of our church. What do you think about the idea? Great. Okay. Tonight I'm, uh, I'm going to teach you another song. It's, a, it's not a new song. It's a very old song from uh, Jason Afton of uh, Morning Stars uh, Ministries. Uh, he plays a lot with Morning Stars. Um, I, I remember that I did a, a French version of this when we used to be in uh, Santo Missionaire of Philadelphia. Uh, but it's a French, it's an English song. So tonight I, I want to try to sing this one. And then we'll probably do the previous one, the, the one we did last Wednesday, just going through the lyrics. Um, can you just go through the lyrics so and make sure everybody can see from here? Can you guys see from here? Hello? Do we see it? So can we can we all read loud? I really want you to pay attention to every word. It's really, it's deep, right? Say, Father, I'm waiting. I need to hear from you. That's, that's a, a position. I would say the person is positioning himself to, to receive. I need to hear from you. To know that you are approving of what I say and do. Say, Father, here I am. Knowing that God, you say, okay. And you welcome everything that I say and everything that I do. Because nothing really satisfies like when you speak my name. That's wonderful, right? Yeah. That nothing that's real, there's nothing that's really uh, touches my heart like when I hear you just saying my name. That's enough. And then say, so tell me that you will never leave. And everything will be okay. Just a confirmation of God's presence cools down all the difficulties of our life. That's what he's saying. Let's go to the... The chorus says, in your presence, all fears gone. In your presence, in your presence is where I belong. In your presence. Okay? Um, the second um, verse says... Can we all read from there? Now it's coming back with a very repenting kind of heart. It says, Father, I'm returning. The things... I used to do. Because somewhere in the journey, I think I lost all of the truth. But nothing really satisfies. Like when you speak my name. So tell me that you'll never leave and everything will be okay. Okay? Let's go to the next song. Just the, That's the song we actually sang last time. Uh, I just want you to be aware of the, cor the, um, the verses. Let's go. For, the first verse says, uh, can you read from there? You guys are lying to me. <laughs> I just listen sounds like I'm <laughs> until I'm a kabatala but can I tell? But you're not really you're really reading like a family, like a homie. 
Okay, I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit, to sit here at your, feet, at your feet. That's also a kind of very prayerful type of song. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. It calls God's presence in the moment of worship as a holy moment where he doesn't want to leave. Uh, let's go. Let's read. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do, I just want. That's a powerful declaration here. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. You know, sometimes we come, we come to church and then we have different agendas. And then people are there, God bless me, God bless me. And then this is a worshiper's heart who's saying to the Lord, God, I'm not here for blessings. That's not what I'm trying to have here. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. You're not supposed to be giving me anything. You, you, you don't have any debt of me. You don't owe me anything. So more than anything that you can do for me, what I really want is you. Next. Verse 3 says, I like this repentance. But do you see in the Bob songs, there's a place of intimacy in God's presence. The more you get closer to the Lord, the more you start to realize how so small you are, how, so, how human you just are. Remember what happened to Peter in the boat. It just saw, it, it just saw Jesus performing a miracle. Uh, it took a lot of fish. And after that, look at Jesus and say, well, would you leave, please? Go away from me because I'm just a sinful person. Because when you enter God's presence, this, this sense of fearing God, you feel how small you are and how big he is. And it's certainly, as you go on your knees, you remember how much he is holy and how dirty you can be. So, um, I'm sorry for when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sung another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Next. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you are enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And then it goes back to caught up in your presence and so on. Um, let's go to the verse. And then the chorus said, I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Okay, okay. I want to teach us the chorus. That's the part we all sing along. So let's start with the the first song, the chorus of the first song. You might need a chair, man. Yeah, you're probably gonna sit there for long. <laughs> Just grab any chair over there. Just now nah, he's gone. Just grab any chair. It's all good. Can, you, can we go to the, the, yeah, the chorus of this first song? Yeah, it's here. I bet you know it. It's not that that's hard. It's uh, in your presence. Oh, here is God in your presence. Okay, let's try. In your presence. In your presence. Let's try now, now a better key so everybody will be really easy to sing because I can hear from here. Um, we are not only, all of us, let's go for two, like D. I think it's be better. In 
your presence. Much better, right? Okay. One, two, three. In your presence, all oh, fear is gone. In your presence, in your presence, it's where I belong. In your presence, let's try again. One, two, three, four. In your presence, all oh, fear is gone. In your presence, in your presence, it's where I am. Great. Let's go back to the chorus, not to, to the verse now. Father, I am. He, he's lost. <laughs> back, go back. <laughs> that was the first song. Yeah. Yeah. Go back. Back. Yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's how we build a family. We accept everybody just the way he is. <laughs> so it's. Father, I am waiting. I need to hear from you. To know that you're approving of what I say and do. Nothing really satisfies Like when you speak my name So tell me that you never leave That everything will be okay In your prayer All fear is gone in your presence. In your presence is where I belong. In your presence. Mm -hmm. In your presence. Father, I am returning The things I used to do But somewhere on the journey I think I lost all of the truth Like when you speak my name So tell me that you never leave And everything will be okay Oh, in your prayer Oh, fear is gone now you can sing that, right? It's very easy to sing. Go. In your presence, it's where I belong. It's where I belong. In your presence. In your presence. In your presence. 
all fear is gone. to the prophetic you have to have a prayerful heart a heart of a worshiper a person who really enjoys God's presence and these are the kind of songs you need to be familiar with all fear is gone God in your Can we all clap? That, that was really good. Now you know the song. Get familiar with the song. Next time we come here, we just go straight, okay? At least you know this song. Let's do the one we did last time. Uh, just for those who were not here, let's go straight to the chorus so we can teach that. Okay, chorus. Okay. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else with you. I just want nothing else, nothing else, nothing else with you. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Let's try again. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we do. Yeah, that was very good. So let's try a better key. Uh, let's try. about that nothing else much better right nothing else nothing else we do I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else we do Whoa. I just want you Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we do. Good. Let's go back to the verses now. I'm caught up in your praises. I just want to sit here at your feet. Caught up in this holy moment, I never want to leave. I'm, I'm not here for blessings, Jesus. You don't owe me. More than anything that you can do, I 
just want you I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry I just sung another song take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I've forgotten you and now take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you. What? What? Oh, caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. Caught up in this holy moment. Never wanna leave. Oh, I'm at you for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Chorus. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing and nothing else we do. Nothing and oh, oh Jesus, I just, I just want you, God. Nothing else. Nothing else, oh Lord Jesus. Nothing else we do, yo. I just want. You. I don't want anything else, Jesus. I don't want anybody, I don't want any material, take everything, just leave me with Jesus. Oh, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we do. I just want you, from the bottom of my heart. Just nothing else, God. Nothing else will satisfy as you call my name. Nothing else we do. I just want you, Lord. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we do. I just want you. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else we do, nothing else we do, Jesus. Can I hear just your voices? I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we do. Can I just hear the voices? I just want. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Can you sing in louder love? I just want you, Jesus. You know, nothing else we do. Nothing else we do, Lord. Can you lift up your hands as you sing? I just want. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we do. 
I just want you. Nothing else. I want you, God. Nothing else we do. I just want you, Lord. I just want you. Nothing else. leave this wonderful presence of yours all would I leave this holy moment you know I'm just caught up here there's no other place to go where you are this is where I'm supposed to be you know why because all fears are gone in your presence and this is where I really belong in your presence because there's nothing like your wonderful presence we we'll salute your praises. We honor your praises tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we all clap our hands and give praise to the Lord? Amen. Back to the teaching. Uh, I hope now you guys are getting used to the new songs. Thank you for the team. Thank you so much. Um, I think the old uh, choir will be maybe continuing this every Sunday, trying to teach you some of the songs and then maybe do some recap uh, so all of us will be familiar to the songs you know it's quite a it's quite he, uh, I mean quite hard to try and worship and keep your eyes open trying to follow the lyrics at least you need some words to memorize and then just go automatically instead of looking at the screens all the time as the worship is uh, as the worship goes tonight we're continuing on this subject we said we're going to talk about God's language, I mean, God's languages, God's ways of speaking. And then, but we're going to practice in dreams, uh, probably on visions too. But I know the, the, old, the subject of dream in itself, it's really big and vast. And then I don't, I don't think we're going to go to the visions for this series particularly, but we're just going to focus on God's language in dreams. Uh, speaking about God's language, we said last time that when we approach the prophetic, we can approach it in the three ways. First of all, it's hear from the Father's heart through the word. I took all the time last, uh, I mean, last Wednesday just explaining this. You better go to the YouTube and then follow the preachings. And then you know what? Maybe you didn't follow everything in like 100%. As probably I speak too, too fast. Just go back to the videos and then you, it's, it's going to do a really good to you. Uh, it's going to be a good time to listen back to the preaching. I do that myself. I did it for this uh, Wednesday. I, I went back to the, my, my last Sunday preaching. I went back to, to my Wednesday, last Wednesday preaching, just following after everything and looking at all the mistakes I did. And then you've been so gracious enough not to point out all my mistakes. Uh, <laughs> and then I, sometimes I listen to the French English that I, I do speak sometimes. And then... You know, I just listen to myself like this one was not English. This one was French. I was thinking in French, actually. And then, so you can go back to the video. You have more explanation. But it, uh, just in summary, what I can say, it's this. When we approach the prophetic, we have to be in, to, have to remember that God is three yun. So three in one. We call it trinity. So the way we approach, uh, the way God reveals himself, uh, gives a very different way of approaching the prophetic. So when you want to discover the will of God, trying to understand what God wants for you, how he directs your steps, that's a conversation you're having with the Father. And then when you want to know what God wants for his people, the plan of God for the humanity, for the church, for the people on the earth, you're trying to discover Jesus' heart. What is Jesus' command and instruction for his church? And then when you're trying to be uh, available to be used by God, 
Now you're having an interaction with the Holy Spirit who uses every Christian on the field uh, to perform miracles, I mean to perform all the gifts of the Spirit. So I just put a little difference in approaching the prophetic with these three ways. I mean, we took almost an hour explaining that um, uh, last Wednesday. Please go back to the video on ECT. We'll also read this particular verse of John chapter 25, verse, I mean, chapter 10, verse 25 to 27. Jesus replied, I told you, and you do not believe. The deeds I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you refuse to believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I said last time that if you are part of the flock, the shepherd said, every one of his sheep listen to his voice. So I said it's natural. You are born with it. If you're born of the Spirit, if you're born to be Christian, if you're born to be a son of God, if you're part of the flock of Jesus as the shepherd, you have to know that you are born with the ability to listen to the voice of the shepherd. And then I said it, Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, all things has been handed over to me by my father. No one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son and anyone to whom the son decides to reveal him, to reveal to him, to reveal him. So just backing up what I said about approaching the prophetic three ways. First of all, I said you have the guarantee to know the instructions of Jesus for his church because you are his sheep. You're born with the ability to listen to his voice. And secondly, Jesus can reveal to you the Father. You can know it's possible for you to know the Father's will. And Jesus said this, no one knows the Father except the Son. And there is a second category here. Not only the Son knows the Father, there's another category of people who actually know the Father. Not really know the Father, but are uh, qualified to receive the knowledge of the Father. Let's say it like that. So they don't know by themselves who is the Father until Jesus decides to reveal him to them. That's the, the second category of people who actually know the Father. And then we also read this book, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 18. We're just reminding us of the promise in the book of Joel, the Bible say, but this, but this is what was spoken about through the, the, prophet, the prophet Joel. And in the last day, I will, it will be, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all people. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. And your young men will see visions. And you, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out all, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. So let's look at uh, last time we actually stopped here. Now we continue. I just want to touch on very quick on some of the other ways that God speaks to us, because remember we're trying to speak up, we're trying to speak on the subject of dreams. So I'm not going to go long to other subjects. I just want you to be aware of some other ways, some other God's languages. First of all, let's talk about the scripture or the scriptures in general. The word of God. When God speaks to you, he speaks through his word. Let's say the Bible. The Bible is the first God's language. Remember last time I told you, um, I give an, an example about knowing my personal will for my kids. Remember that? Who was here last time? I don't want to ask the other question. Just slip out your hands and then the other question will be clear. Okay, great. So last time what I said is, uh, suppose that I'm no longer here. I'm gone in eternity. I hope this day will come because this world is really... <laughs> It's not really good <laughs> anymore to stay here in this world. Things are getting worse every single minute. Suppose that I'm gone in eternity, staying with the Lord, enjoying worshiping him. And then you guys back here wants to know 
what are you supposed to do for my kids because they're all grown and they all grown and then they want to go to university. So you wonder what was my will for them. You either got to find it in the my testament if I wrote that somewhere, or you go find people who know me, and then my wife, for, um, for example, will tell you what did I say about my kids. The people hanging around me know, they do know what is my will for my kids. Probably I said to them, I don't want my kids to study here. I want them to go abroad, maybe in the U.S., maybe in England, maybe in South Africa to go continue their study like university. So you didn't know that. You didn't know. But I'm not, I'm not there anymore, so I'm not around. You can't ask me the question. But there's still a way for you to be uh, in touch with my will without seeing me personally. Am I right? You either go to the testament, to the book, go check my will, where I wrote my will. I put everything I want to be done, not now, but forever. <laughs> I put my will for 20 years ahead, for 30 years ahead. It means if you could go on that particular time, Find me the place I am and ask me. I would have to tell you exactly the same things. I would tell you I want my kids to go study abroad. But you can directly go find it in the book. Because that's where I put all my will. That's how the Bible works. Everything you want God to tell you now, he said it already. What you're trying to discover is his will. His will is already settled about you. The problem is we want to go too much to the particular without understanding the general. There's no particularity of God's will over your life that goes against his general will for all the humanity. So God will not create another planet for you to go live because you don't want to, you don't want to miss, uh, you don't want to stay in Congo because electricity goes all the time. And then you can go and retreat and pray until God creates another planet just for you. Oh, you love, you, 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 your heart is full of compassion and you're asking God to forgive the devil and then maybe the devil will be saved. That will never happen. You see? Why? Because this is God's will already revealed and settled and set apart and written. So you don't need to... See God personally right now for you to know what is his will. So sometimes we battle a lot on trying to know, God, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? There's something that is very clear. The plan of God for you is for good. That is already in the Bible. God wants to give you life. That's already in the Bible. He wants you to accomplish God's will. He wants you to go all over the world and win some soul. It's already in the Bible. There are a lot, a lot of things that already crystals and clear in the Bible. So the problem is we don't go for the Bible. We just need a prophecy now. But yet the Bible said, any prophecy you receive now, you have to check it. To check the accuracy of the prophecy where? In the scriptures. Because the God who spoke cannot contradict the God who speaks. The same God who revealed his will already cannot go on and try to contradict himself. There must be something, there must be something weird in that. So the scriptures, it can be perceived without being listened to. It means... The scriptures, is, it is the very thought which is contained in all the revelation. When God speaks, we can see, feel, uh, be healed, dream, etc., etc. I think there's a mistake. It's not a scripture, it's the voice. I'm sorry, I think I've mistaken something over there. The comment I put, it's on the voice of God, not on the scriptures. I'm sorry about that. Um, so I was explaining to you the scripture, but the comment is not for the scripture. The comment is for the voice of God. So just as I said, the scriptures are already there. There's something that's very interesting. When you look at, when you read the Bible, and when you read the prophecy, 
you read the revelations and the dreams and the everything the prophet wrote about, you will see they always talk about a certain book in the heavenly. In God's presence, there are already books. There, there will be something like, the, and then the angel opened up a book. Did you read that in Revelation, uh, um, maybe in uh, Ezekiel and Daniel? There will be always books over there. And they'll read the book loud. And, they'll, and then what's the read will start manifesting. Why do they read books over there? Do they need memories? Why do God, the Bible talks about the book of memories of God. Did you read about that in the Bible? The, the Bible says there's a book in front of God where everything's are written. Do you really think God forgets? It doesn't. But it's just a way for him to say that everything you want to hear now, it's already said. And it's already revealed. It's already available depending on the level, depending on the, your ability, depending, of, uh, depending on God's permission to know those content. Why am I saying that? Because there are some of the things that you, God can reveal to you, but you cannot say to anybody. You can see, you can discover, but you cannot communicate. Remember what Paul said. He said, I know a man who, who enter even to the, the third level and a soul, a witness things that he could not tell to people. Even when you read the book of Revelation, um, the Bible says, um, uh, John listened to some of the, the sounds and the voice and the, uh, uh, and, and the message. And the angel said, this one, you cannot write it. Seal it. Are you still here? Which means, uh, in terms of devotion, in terms of personal experience, there are people who experience things that they cannot say. Because they didn't say it, you cannot even find it in the scriptures. Because God did not permit them to reveal it to other people. Because it's not available for everybody. I'm not saying you should go for it. I'm just saying sometime God will, will do some, some favor to some people. I mean, probably because of their mission on the earth. And it will grant them the ability to discover some other level of revelation that are already written in the book. Not this one, but the other one. Remember another vision that I think that was uh, Ezekiel. The Bible said, even John, I think, had a, almost the same vision too. The Bible said it, uh, a book has been given to him, and then he actually etched the book. And when he swallowed the book, it was... Peter inside, but uh, it was testing like honey, right? Which book? Why does God give, is he giving books to people in the spirit? It's just a way to say God's will can be revealed, still written, even on a, a physical material support and been given, delivered to human beings. So that's where you should start to know what is God's will. Not in the hair, not in the spirit, but in the book. So there is a book which is already available. And that's the, that's the only thing we don't read. But yet we're asking God, what is your will? God, I want to know your will. And then we find it very difficult to discover God's will in the Bible. Why? Because we're reading it very wrong. In a very wrong way. We are reading the book without the spirit of the book. I believe one of the things that should, we should teach the must in the church is how to read the Bible and how to understand the Bible. But what we do, we open up the Bible and we just start teaching, assuming that the people understand what we're saying. And then it's almost an insult here in Kinshasa when you said to a person that he doesn't read the Bible. Are you insulting me? I was saying I don't pray, I don't go to church, I do go to church. <laughs> but when you ask them, how many verse, how many scriptures did you read in the day? We all know the answer. It's like, uh, 
Well, normally, uh, I, I, I was hoping <laughs> we are not that serious with the scriptures. We just don't want to listen to God. Have you ever felt how bad and how disgusting, sometimes how tiring it can be to repeat the exact same thing, the exact same thing to the same person after every five minutes? Imagine you talking to someone and then it feels like it, you know, it's almost listening to you, but you can feel from his eyes that this guy is already gone. He doesn't listen to me. And then, and then you ask him the question. Do you understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. What did you just say? Say it again, please. And then you go back and explain. After five minutes, say, did you understand what I said? Well, well, can we go back to the, you know, remember what you said about, um, can, can you explain, please just explain the whole thing. That's how we, that's, that's how the type of relationship we have with God. In every season of our life, we're having retreat, prayer, God, speak to me. God is like, I told you. She said, please, God, I, I forgot that. Can you, can you just say, I told you. Remember the dream. Remember the preaching. Remember, you remember the, that lady that I sent to you? Remember, remember that? The, I, to, I told you several times. You know, no one will stand before God and say, God, you didn't speak to me. Because the Bible is clear. God speaks. If you didn't listen, that's another issue. But about God speaking, that's very, God. He did even speak and even write. He made people to write it. So you don't have, it, you don't, you have no reason to say, God, I don't know what you want. It's like God feels like if he speaks to people will not understand him. So he did some voices. Not voice. He sent it to some prophets. And those guys, they put the voice on and they start writing. And they leave all the writings because the message, how do you call that? There's a Munich message that disintegrate themselves. Like short what? Short message. Those messages that disintegrate after, after a while. How do you call them? Like short term kind of messages on WhatsApp. I don't even know how to activate them, but I saw them. So. Like short period type of messages. And God knows human beings' memory. He made sure the, the first person listened to the message, write it down. So please, brothers and sisters, before we have dreams, how would you even interpret your dreams if you don't know God's language, God's symbols? You know, the more, the more you read the Bible, the more things like, uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation. I know the book of Re Revelation actu actually scares a lot of people. When they read them, like, and they had eyes all over and foreheads. And and <laughs> you were afraid of, of having scary dreams, right? <laughs> but the more you read even the Old Testament, the more you become very familiar to these symbols. And then now you can find the understanding. You know why they did use those symbols back in the days. Because they knew. Can you really imagine God trying to reveal something? They call it revelation. But yet it's like unsealed. It's like sealed up, by the way, to us. The book is called Revelation. But, but what you go read the book is like there's no revelation in it. It's hiding. It's not revealing it's hiding mysteries. Do you think it makes sense to call a book Revelation? And then it's as if it's the, the most difficult book of the Bible. Remember, uh, John is writing to the seven churches. And when you look at the, to the, those churches, there were absolutely no theologian over there. They were all weak, like men of symbolism has changed a lot in our head. Based on the movies, based on the uh, billboard out there, based on our studies, school. A lot, of, a lot of things has changed in the symbolism. Now, when you look at something, it doesn't mean to you what the Bible says. It means to you what one of the um, Hollywood movies means. Now you're trying to understand God based on the Hollywood way of portraying. 
the spiritual realities. Why? Because you don't read the Bible. <laughs> I had people coming to me and say, I had a dream. And then all my, in my dream, I want. <laughs> so wh why do you think like that? Because that's what you see on, in the movies. So wh why do you think like that? Because that's what you see on, in the movies. That's not the Bible. God speaks, and God knows how to speak. But when you come in the church, it's as, as if we have a God who's trying to speak. God is old enough to speak. So God, what are you trying to tell me? No, he's not trying. He's saying it already. You are trying to get what he's trying to say. He's saying it very clearly. You are striving to understand what he's saying. You know, it's like you're speaking to a Chinese. He's already speaking. But he's just speaking Chinese. So, so what are you trying to say? He's saying it loud, very clearly. But you just don't know how to speak Chinese. So you want to talk to God? You have to be uh, serious with the word of God. Because that's God's language. The second thing I call it the voice of God. The voice of God is it's something else. It can, it can be heard, it can be, it can be audible or deep inside of you. It, uh, it is an articulate description in un, a known or unknown tongue, I mean a known language. It's an art, articulate description. God is describing clearly as a person speaks. That's what we call the voice of God. It means you hear God as if you hear your own language. Remember what I said on the first day. God does not speak a language. God communicates. Because way before a language has been created, God was already speaking to the creation. So remember, one, the, <laughs> the Bible says, in the beginning, God said, let be light. He didn't call it light. Light is our words. Mm, does it make sense? Mm, <laughs> no, uh, some of you are still there. That, okay, let me explain that again. Let's go back to the beginning. God has no language. God does not need any language to speak to who? So in the beginning, without having us, God doesn't need any language. God is spirit. So God by himself doesn't need any language to speak to, to who? <laughs> so the way angel communicate with God is not speaking French, Lingala, or English. There's a spiritual way of communication. Until God create human being and put, him, uh, put a human being on the earth, and then the human being start being in the need of communicating. And then uh, as the time goes, that's how human being has created language. How to communicate with a very strict kind of symbols um, and, and words and so on. So before the language, do you think the word God pronounced was light? Because the word light did not exist yet. Is it clear now? Yeah. Or is just troubling you? <laughs> so God expressed himself in the way that we have light. Now we call it light. But the, there is God expression to actually have what he desired to have without using our language. Let me explain that again. God can have whatever, whatever thing he wants to have without speaking our language. Our language does not obligate God to express himself. God doesn't learn English so he can talk to you. No, God knows how to talk to you directly in the means of your feeling, your reality. He, he speaks the, you know, why do we use even language? We use language, remember what I say. We use our language to actually, um, as, a, as a channel, 
to carry a spirit to another spirit. So you're taking your spiritual, emotional state and trying to give it to another person. That's why you, you, you use words. So if I'm frustrated, I want you to feel that I'm frustrated. That's why I'm using specific words. If I'm disappointed, um, I want you to feel my disappointment. That's why I'm putting my face in a certain ways. And if I'm happy, I want you to know I'm happy. So I'll try my best to communicate the emotions I have. Using, for human beings, a language. But in the beginning, God was just sending the word. And in the Bible, the word is the spirit. It doesn't mean it's articulated in a language. <laughs> Boy. So do not confuse language and word of God. When God open up his mouth, what comes out is spirit. That's why the Bible say the spirit is the word. When God releases, he releases a spirit. But now when the, that word of God comes to you, it becomes articulated in the language that you have in your mind, or you, uh, at least you can memorize and remember. That's, why you, well, that's when you call it the voice of God. But hear this. The voice of God has this ability. This, this is the ability of the word of God. When the word of God is spoken... You don't have to listen with your ears. Because there were no ears when God started speaking. Because it is the word that's created. Ears. I'm confusing you now. Am I losing you guys? No? Stay here? Okay. Maybe you're just thinking about this, right? So why did I not think about this before? I don't know. <laughs> it means this. When God speaks, he speaks to the, the very... Cons <laughs> I really want to get there. Well, how do I... How do I the constitu... Hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, all the elements that constitute it the, the existence of any potency and the vibration of the vocal cord of God. So it doesn't have to be a language. Do you understand what I'm explaining right now? So when God speaks, it means before you hear his, anything that God is addressing to will hear God's voice. It means when God speaks to your sickness, your body will respond. That's why the Bible says, he sent his word, and his word healed them. Now, the word didn't go to the hearers. The word went straight to the sicknesses. You hear, you hear what I'm saying here? Which means when God speaks, you don't hear first. You perceive. It's a perception. When you perceive God's voice, you might perceive it with your ears. You might perceive it internally as a voice speaking inside of you. Because where is God? God is not outside. God is not inside. God is God. So which means the voice of God can be deeply uh, heard inside of your heart you can hear there's a, a guidance God is speaking to you but you can hear it the way you hear another human being speaking you turn and then you hear nobody but still God speaking one thing is important that I have to say it doesn't mean that if you can hear God as you hear a human being you are in a higher level of spirituality no you might be just weird and fool because some people go to the psychiatric hospital because of hearing voices. So nothing actually confirmed that what you hear is God. 
So don't try to hear the voice physically. You become more mature when you're able to translate every languages of your body to perceive God's voice. Because sometimes it's your leg will listen to God's voice. And then you, something you will understand, that's why I'm even explaining to you all the dreams. Most of the time, when God speaks, your eyes perceive the first, not your ears. Why? Because the reality, the, the, the final intent of communication is visualization. Let me go back to that. The final intent, when a person tries to communicate to you, his final intent is that you can have a vision of what he sees. If you start seeing the way he sees it. Hmm? Do you know uh, the Bandal Mall? Bandal Mall. You guys know Bandal Mall? How many of you know Bandal Mall? You don't know? Sure. Okay. Well, do you know uh, uh, Santenaire Church? Okay. You keep going Santenaire Church, right? You, you're trying to go to Bandal, right? Do you know the roundabout? Uh, Mola. Mola roundabout. You know Mola roundabout? You keep going. You just try and go to Bandal, right? There's a Mola roundabout. You know, can you see Mola roundabout? There's a word uh, on the left going back to Kasavu, right? Another one going to Bandal, still going like a Bandal uh, Chibango. No, no, that's the one, that's one goes to Bandal Mola, and then the right one goes to Bandal Chibango, right? Can you see that? You, can you see that? So you mean you, 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 you're seeing that? So you, we are here. Remember, we are here. So you... So can you still see that? <laughs> Okay, but you are here. Okay, but you said you, you saw that. Now, there is a tension right now. I'm sharing concept that you don't have image of it. But uh, as I'm trying to connect you to the new concept of Bandal Mall, I'm using the former image you might have already. So what I'm telling you, it's new. But I'm trying to bring you to the new thing using the old one. That's why whenever God speaks to you about something, it will always be a wow thing when it happens. Because what God does, it tries to low down to meet your vision, the, the limitation of your vision, the thing th that you can see. That's why Jesus was saying, I'm still using human language. What if I start using divine language? You see? There might be Bandal, Bandal Mall, but you don't see it yet. Somewhere there. Now you all are confused. So does Bandal Mall exist or not? It does. Not into what you can see now. <laughs> <laughs> so when the voice of God is released, you perceive the voice of God. So when you, go, you come in God's presence and say, God, speak to me. Do not expect your ears to hear. Your expectation, your ability of perception has to open up all your physical senses, all your spiritual senses, because the voice of God will react directly. The problem we have is how to perceive the voice of God. And then you go back and go, I did like a week of prayer, but I didn't see oh, this retreat. I was just worshiping God. And then God didn't see anything. Oh, really? Yeah. But I, have, I had this one song that I was singing all over the time, every time. Whenever I just want to pray, this, there was this song that I was just singing it. Oh, did you listen to the song? No, I just... It just if you've gone through the verses and the chorus of the song, yeah, I like the song. You don't, you don't have to like the song. Did you listen to the song? Because sometimes when the voice of God comes to you, it goes straight to the repertoire of your heart, to your song list. It picks the song. It brings it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm my, you, okay. 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 Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. This might be confusing, okay? Just be ready to listen to this. Sometimes the voice of God, of God, goes to your mind 
and to your memories, to your somewhere in your brain, and pops back even a secular song. A secular song. You just oh, you just wake up a day, and this this secular song goes in your mind. It's like, in Jesus' name, what is this? <laughs> Let me, okay, this example might help you. Uh, if you ever seen the movie, my kids' movies, Transformers. There's a special Transformers with a, the yellow one, the yellow car. Bumblebee. You know Bumblebee? Mm, ah, do you know Bumblebee? <laughs> do you see Bumblebee? <laughs> There's something with the story of Bumblebee, and it's like, they said something was broken in him, his ability to speak. It doesn't really speak. So what he does, he goes through the system of the radio, I mean the, the, the radio of the car, right? He tunes different stations and pick up words. So that's how Bumblebee speaks. So he goes to this channel and then this, he, he, he picks this word and then it gives it to you and then he even picks up sometime. Um, songs. So next time, I think we should play one of the Bumblebee session. Well, so so everybody will remember what you're saying. So that's exactly how you perceive the voice of God. When the voice comes to you, it picks up everything in a different channel to make you put together one message. You understand that now? So when you want to hear God, do not do that. Because it can come in a different ways. If you really want to be able to, to listen to God, to hear his voice, you have to be ready and able to perceive from all the different perception. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 to 2. Uh, for 7 to 12. Instead, we speak the wisdom of God, hidden in a mystery that God determined before the ages of our glory, for, for our glory. No one of the rulers of this age understood it. If they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as it is written, things no eyes has seen or ears heard or mind imagined are the things God has prepared for those who love him. Did you see that? Eyes, seen, ears, heard, and mind imagined. For the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. You know how it does? Now it searches everything, even the deep Deep things of God. For who among men knows the things of a man except the man, man's spirit within him? So too, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. <laughs> uh, I'm about to explain to you something that will blow your mind, but let me check the time. <laughs> now we have not received the spirit of the Lord, but the, the spirit of the word by the spirit who is from God, so that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Oh God, oh God. Okay, let me spend two. When God speaks to you, he does not really speak to you. Okay? Would you help your neighbor just to wake up? Make sure he's still alive? Is he still following? What does he say? Is, is he still here? Or he's gone? Like, I, I'm, I'm gone like, like long ago. When he started explaining those weird stuff, I'm gone already. <laughs> what I'm trying to do here, I want you to be spiritual people. 
not carnal Christians. I want you to, to get the level of spirituality of the Bible. Sometimes what people did, they made the Bible to become morality. Jesus did not come for morality. Jesus came for spirituality. That's why the first thing he wants us to do is to be born again of the spirit, not born of moral laws. Because morality among people changes all the time. Today they said this is good. Next time they say it's, not, it's no longer good. And one of those days, now we're having all kinds of stuff. I heard last time I was, my wife was sending me an article, something. That, there was a lady who said she was suck water, water full, be our water full, something. Ah, oh, she says she has she has an, a sexual attraction to water. Can you get? Do you see? Do you see? I heard about sexual attraction to to animals. I heard about men to men, women to women. Now uh, there's water. Did you hear about that? Yes. So she. Had, oh my God! This is not, <laughs> indescribable, unbelievable. Even animal doesn't have that. Okay, we have allowed that for the first time. Now it's gone. Nobody can stop them. When God speaks to you, he does not really speak to you. The book of Proverbs says this. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. He searches even the deeper part of him. Let me expand let me expand that. It says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Listen to what Paul is explaining here. He says, Who knows a man if it's not the spirit of a man? And then he compares that to this. So, the Spirit of God knows the things of God. Why? Because he searches. Look at what it says. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. <laughs> but the book of Proverbs says, the Spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. It means well, your spirit, not the spirit of God, your spirit. Can you, get, can you get the scripture so I can give them? Your spirit, not the spirit of God, you, your spirit, okay? Is the candle of the Lord, is the lamp of the Lord. Your spirit, okay? Mm. Your spirit. Not the Spirit of God, you, just the way you are. Your spirit is the candle of the Lord, not your candle, the candle of the Lord. And then when God want to search and check inside of you, he uses your own spirit. Because when God wants to check inside of him what he wants for you, he uses also his own spirit. Proverb. 2027. I'm already on my slide. I don't know if I can go to that. Great. 2027. I don't know how I end up here, but. Proverb 2027. Thank God for technology. This could have taken taken a lot of time to Peter, to Paul. So this century of us is complicated, but yet it still have some good side of it. 20, 27. Listen to it. Do you see that? Do you want me to zoom it a lot? Oh, it doesn't zoom enough. This is the Bible, so <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't zoom. 
but this is it. Can you see that? It says, the human spirit is like the lamp of the Lord, searching all things in the most part. The spirit, the expression here is, is the nefesh, the spiritual capacity of a man. It means this. Within a man, the Lord has put the light of the beginning, which is the place where God puts all the content that a human spirit might need. The all knowing of God is ability to know everything. It puts it in the spirit of a man. So whenever God trying to tell you a new thing, he doesn't really tell you from outside. He activates inside the all-knowing capacity you have. But the problem is this. Your spirit cannot stay with the all-knowing capacity in the physical body. But you are created of the nature of God who knows everything. So which means when God speaks to you, he doesn't move from where he is to come to you and speak, speak to you. Because you bear his nature. His will is in you. What he does, he gives you his spirit because your spirit has lost his light. That's why the spirit of God comes. That's why the first symbol of the outspouring of the spirit of God was the lights upon their head. Remember how the Bible called that? The Bible called it a tongue. That's the part of the light when you, up, when you just, um, I mean, you put a light on a candle. That's the part of it. When you put a light over a lamp, you put a light on a torch. That's what happened. Boom. That's the name the Bible called the language of fire. The tongues of fire. So on that particular day, God put lights back in our spirits. Now, what God, the spirit of God does, whenever you want to reveal something to you, it takes your spirit and it takes you back to the eternity nature. The eternal nature, the divine nature in you, it starts making you discover the knowledge that you have. Oh my God. So, the Spirit of God goes with you, inside of you, and such is start, in the start now putting light over situations. It start enlightening some situation. Now, it start making you conscious of some of the things you've been unconscious of. Because you are not aware of how many things you know until the Spirit pointed out. That's why you have a lot of dreams. Why? Because within your spirit, everything you need to know are already there. It is in the hard drive since the creation. God has loaded your spirit with his will and his nature. Which means nothing happens into God's presence right now. You are not. What happens is this. Whenever the Spirit of God comes to you, it gives you ability to update yourself. <laughs> now, whenever any updates might happen, I mean, we don't even know where these guys does their updates. Do they do that in the U.S.? We don't know. But just in a day, you see there is a message, a red message that says you need to update the whole thing. And then you press and you update. What did you really update? No, I did update the system. Which system? No, I mean, uh, the systems is some. System is very far. They didn't even touch your computer. That's your computer here in Africa. But somewhere they have changed the whole thing that is linked to your computer. Which means our spirit is linked to the spirit of God in the nature. God's will to those who have the Holy Spirit 
he gives them ability to update every morning the new information of how God is handling the world. But everybody has been created as the same computer. We have the same software. We have the same capacity. But we don't have the same updates. Until you receive the spirit. Now it gives you ability to update the content. It gives you ability to see that there is a new update that has to come. You know, sometimes there are updates, but as long as you are not connected on the internet, you don't see that. Until the first minute you are connected and then you have a lot of messages. Ta, 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 ta. There are people who are out of, they are not online right now. They are offline. So there are those we call on. Christian, not born again. But it doesn't mean their software are not working. They're still working. They're still using it at the maximum. But they are offline. So, you know why we don't listen to God? Because we're trying to search for him outside, somewhere, at the mountain. God, oh, Rabba, Baba, God, speak. <laughs> remember what Paul said Paul says this he said um, I want you to actually perform the gift of prophecy why because if a person come in your assemblies the thought of his heart will be revealed he didn't even say the will of God He said, and the thought of his heart will be revealed. And he will say, God is among you. Did you read that? First Corinthians chapter, I mean 13. He said, when the person comes in your midst, you will have ability to read. Oh, that's, let me just finish. <laughs> You'll have ability to read what is in his spirit. And then get to know by the spirit of God who enlighten your spirit. It gives you ability to know what is happening to the other spirit. I call it discernment of spirit. It helps you discover the nature of the other spirit. Why? Because you are enlightened. The spirit of God has put light in your spirit. Now your spirit is already enlightened. Do you know? There is no other thing that the spirit of man is looking for like light. That's why all the other spirituality so far. Do you know what they try to offer? They call it light. They say, come to the religion of light. We give you light. And then you will receive light. But in the beginning. Before the human nature discover how to pronounce this phenomenon. That's they call light. Before God uses. Before human being uses the word light. To discover this ability that God has sent on the earth. Because God didn't say in the beginning, let there be light. Because the word light was not even existing. God, they don't have that. But the spirit of a man searches for it. And so if you say, there's some light, they go for light. Why? Because Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free which means the knowledge has some light not the knowledge as information and ability to gather new data but the relationship of the real God you discover why because Jesus called us sons of light the word sons of light 
is an idiomatic way, uh, way of saying those who rule because of their knowledge. Those who have power to rule over people because they have knowledge. So that's why you find a lot of religions of knowledge. Religions of knowledge. We give you knowledge, knowledge. There is no knowledge that can really change human being. It is not knowing the Son of God personally as an experience. Knowing Christ. Not knowing this mystical. No, knowing Christ. Knowing the person of Christ. Being enlightened by the Spirit of God. You know, those people, they were just normal guys. They were fishermen, they were so and so. But these ordinary people turns to extraordinary people because the lights, the real light. Remember, it happens in the period, they call it the period of enlightenment. That's the period where Jesus came. They said there was wisdom, knowledge, people were enlightened. They had a lot of discovery. They start, philosophy became, they thought because they have knowledge. Now they, they have, that's why Peter, I mean John, when he wrote his book of John, it started by the words they used to use in that time. They say, now you need the logos. You need to have the logic. That's what saves you. And human being in his spirit, it needs the logos. The logos has no beginning. The logos is the way of thinking. That's what will save you. And John heard them saying that so a lot of time. So he wrote his book by starting with the word Logos. He said, in the beginning, you're right, there was the Logos. Now he started giving a meaning to the Logos. He said, in the beginning was the Logos. The Logos was with God. And the Logos was God. That's why as he goes, the Logos turns to light. And then when he say we have received, we didn't receive the logos. We did receive the light, which is the logos. But when it comes to reception, it comes to, it talks about the light. And the lights shine in the midst of darkness. And no darkness received them. But to those who received them. So you see, light is not something. Light is not some sort of understanding. Light is a person. You don't have Christ, you don't have any light. Explain whatever thing you want to explain. Talk to me about any, um, how much money you receive per day. You don't have light. If you don't have Christ, you don't have light. But if you have Christ... Why are you behaving as if you don't have light? As if you're confused. As if you don't know where you're going. You have the light. Your spirit is not in darkness. Your spirit has been enlightened by Christ to the Holy Spirit. Can we pray? As I'm, can we just pray for a while? I don't want you to ask God, God enlighten my spirit. Because the light of Christ is already in you. I want you to pray and ask God. God help me to perceive your voice. I want to have the ability to know. This is you speaking. Without only exercising my ears. I want to be able to perceive your voice. From all the different perception. That a human being can have. I want to know this is God's voice. Even when I watch the movie on TV. I want to do this is God's voice, even what it, when if ju it's just a song in, within me. I want to listen to God's voice, even when I meet a fool somewhere, uh, whatever place, at the bus station, a person doesn't even have his mind in order, but I can listen at the back of his craziness, a very clear logic of the Creator. God, I want to listen to you. I want to be able. To understand the kind of God that I'm, I'm praying. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we do. I just 
this world is nothing else nothing else nothing else for me to I'm caught up in your, your presence I just want to sit here at your feet caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave oh I'm not here for blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything more than anything and do I just want you mm -hmm. I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else we do God I just want you nothing else Nothing else, Lord, nothing else we do. I just want you, God. Nothing else, Jesus, nothing else. Nothing else we do, God. I just want you. Nothing else, more of you, Lord. That's just the light I want to God. Yes, I just want you, Lord. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, Lord. Yeah. Nothing else we do, God. Oh, I just want you, Jesus. You know, I just want you. Nothing else. Take all the stuff. I don't want it. Nothing will replace you. My heart of cheese. Oh, 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 I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we do. Oh, I just want I you, just God. Want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. I feel like tonight I have to. I don't know how to call it, but I feel like I need to, to impact people. I need to. really minister to impact people would you just lift up your hand and be open up I, I really feel like the Lord wanted to to share something coming out of me I just wanted to use me in a way that something that has granted me with it wants us to be just only here and be sure to everybody believe in the impactation I really believe that the Spirit of God can use one person to impact out of others life so if you really believe there's something that the Lord has given to us into the prophetic into the understanding of the prophetic into the understanding of God's heart into the understanding of God's mysteries into the understanding of God's will I want you to really have your heart open up because right now as we pray God is giving you something that you have never had before is leveling up your ability to understand his voice your ability to understand his will it wants you to get to another level of knowing where God is when God is how God is why God is doing this way Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now, tonight. Spirit of understanding. Spirit of understanding. Let your light shine in us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are no longer in the darkness. We cannot continue being in the confusion. We are no longer into darkness. Jesus, you are the perfect light. When we go out there in the world, sometimes we behave as if our God is dead and as, as if we are orphans. As if we are in the darkness and they are in the light. Which is absolutely not like that. We are in the light. We have received the light. Jesus has given us ability to know God's will. We are the one who sees. We see the world in its real state. They are just confused. They are, they are looking at things in, in the wrong way. Because they have been made blind by the prince of this world. But you, but you felt us with your spirit to give us light so there will be no confusion in our heart. So tonight I'm praying that every dream will come with understanding. Tonight I'm praying that every vision will come with a conviction in the heart. Tonight I'm praying that every feeling in the body will come with the God's heart, the ability to understand the message behind. I'm praying God that the spirit of the anointing that you put over my head call in my ministry to reveal mystery and to simplify the deep things of God to make them available to anybody who's ready to receive let them receive tonight in the name of Jesus I know there are dreamers there are prophets and prophetess here I know there are, there are people of the mysteries those to whom God shares his heart in the dream even when they are awake I know mysteries are available tonight I know chosen people are here tonight to whom God speak every single minute I want from today there will be a level of understanding that even when as they walk around as they go as they stand at the bus station they can listen to God's voice in a different manner Because the prophecy of the book of Joel is available. The Bible say, in this day, our day, this day, this last day, you will pour out your spirit. And sons and daughters, they will prophesy. And men and women of your servant God, they will prophesy. And there will be dreams. And there will be visions. And there will be prophecies. And there will be spiritual capacity, spiritual power, spiritual understanding of the deep secret of God. I'm praying in the name of Jesus tonight. That you will make this English church to be a church of the spirit. Nothing else we do. Barbara de Motelebo shake it. Make us people of the spirit. Make us people of the spirit. People of the spirit who loves God praises. People of the spirit who carries the light of God. Oh, Brade Mashade. Come, Beletila, Brade. Who carries the praises of God. The light of the world. Let it be light. You said, We are the light of the world.
Debra daba takara mayanda la mashati. Take bashe, take bashe. Barega she, tabe yaku. Ramandu karu, shabro bekani, marega tai. Let the Spirit of God open your heart and open your spirits that you shall see, that you shall listen. We shall feel in your body everything that is in you will respond to the voice from today whenever God speaks. Everything in you will listen to the voice. And you'll be able to translate God's voice, God's language to the rest of the world. That the heart of the Father will be known to you. The instructions of Christ over the church will be known. And the direction of the Spirit will be known. That you become an instrument in God's hand to transform people's lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can we clap hands for Jesus?